So I'm going to start by telling you a true story. About two weeks ago, I was sleeping, minding my own business, snoring away, sawing a few logs, and all of a sudden, I started asking myself in the dream if there was one investment out of all the investments in the world, if there was one investment that I would possibly want to invest in, if I only had the choice to invest in one asset, that would include stocks, bonds, real estate, art, whatever, only had one choice, what would that asset be? And then right after I asked myself that question in the dream, I woke up. Okay. And when I woke up, the answer came to me. And you know what that answer was? I would invest in an oil refinery. Okay, now some people might gasp in horror. Some people might laugh. Some people might have no idea why I would say that. But the obvious reason as to why I would say that is they ain't building any more of these things in the United States or really anywhere else in the world because of ESG, okay? These refineries, the few that are left in North America and in the United States are becoming very rare and incidentally, extremely profitable. And then, and I'm not exaggerating, two days later, I came across a video of Carl Icahn, the famed investor, one of the most successful investors in the world, worth $15 billion. I saw a video of him talking about none other than CVR Energy. Now, Carl Icahn described CVR Energy as a hidden gem. It's a company that he's been in for quite a number of years. He's put a ton of money into it, over $400 million. He's claimed to basically save it from when a lot of other refineries were going out of business. But now everything seems to be working, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So CVR Energy is a diversified holding company involved primarily in renewable fuels and petroleum refining. They have a marketing business as well as a nitrogen fertilizer manufacturing business through its interest in CVR Partners, which is a uh, general partnership which owns the fertilizer businesses. CVR Energy serves as the general partner in the partnership and they own 37% of the common units. The company has two basic segments. One is petroleum refining and the other is nitrogen fertilizer. The company basically manufactures transportation fuels such as jet fuel, gasoline, and diesel fuel. The company has two refining assets, one in Coffeyville, Kansas, the other in Wynwood, Oklahoma. The fertilizer business has two facilities, one located in Kansas next to one of the refineries, and the other one is located in Illinois. Now the thing that makes this situation so interesting to me is not only do I consider the refining business an extremely valuable asset, but their fertilizer business is also an extremely valuable asset for a company to have. And ever since the war in Ukraine and what's going on in Europe, two things have been happening. Number one, the fertilizer business has been exploding because of supply problems and because of the fact that everyone needs fertilizer if you want to eat, but also the rising price of natural gas. And what I've come to understand is that natural gas is a critical component and one of the main inputs into making nitrogen-based fertilizer. Now, what I believe what makes these fertilizer assets so attractive and so valuable is that they are the only facilities in North America that does not use natural gas as a manufacturing input. Instead, they use petroleum coke, which is a waste product from the refining process 
they use that petroleum coke to manufacture the nitrogen-based fertilizer. This is an incredible synergy within the company and I think it gives them a competitive advantage worldwide because they're not subject to the rising and falling of natural gas, which is mostly rising these days. A lot of refineries went out of business. A lot of the large refineries, or the big companies, listened to the government telling you how terrible refineries were and, and, and stopped, uh, stopped building them up. So today, what they call the crack spread has widened tremendously. Uh, the diesel crack, for instance, has gone up as high as $75 or $80. And that just means it used to be, you know, $20, $25. So obviously, our EBITDA has, for, the, for, the, for three quarters, has gone up to $800 million, I believe, or, or close to a billion. But then you can't really come in and say, well, these refineries, you know, should, should pay more taxes or something because in the bad times, I must have put three, four hundred million dollars in to save that refinery or that two refineries when a lot of refineries went out of business. So now you're backed into an energy problem for gasoline and diesel. And diesel is very important today. Diesel now is used in Europe to generate electricity, which will stop eventually. And then our refinery, uh, Winnie Wood and Coffeeville, the two refineries, we're able to produce fertilizer or help to produce fertilizer. So we don't need, in, with fertilizer, you, you, you need ammonia. You need gas to make the ammonia, you know, NH3. You need natural gas, except we're the only one in the country, and people don't understand this, that built this many years ago. We, we had the foresight to build it. I can't take credit for it, but it's there. <laughs> and we were able to make it with a company called Pete Coat, Pet Coat. And so we don't need the natural gas to make the fertilizer. And we ended up owning a fertilizer uh, plant, which is the factory is right next to our refinery. And it's really fascinating. And Nobody even wanted that, that seven, eight years ago, but we nourished it and we kept it going. We own 36% of it and we own the control of it. And obviously today, fertilizer is the most necessary thing in the world if you think about it, especially if the Ukraine keeps going and they shut off these things. And we're, we are the only one in the country that can make it without natural gas. Another aspect of this company that I find extremely interesting is that it was recently announced that CBR Energy is considering spinning off its fertilizer business into a separately held public company in order to focus on the fertilizer business separately and the strategies there and the capital allocation there and concentrate on the refining business separately and also the, the business strategy and the capital allocation. By focusing on the two businesses separately, they think they will create more value for shareholders. And me, as a CVI shareholder, I will get shares in both CVR Energy and in the new fertilizer business after the tax-free exchange is spun off. Okay, here you can see the stock chart. You can see uh, presently it's at the lower end of its trading range, which I like over the last uh, months uh, since June. And you can see if you go back to the beginning of this year, this is a year to date chart, you can see it's gone from 17 and change up to 30. So it's practically doubled, uh, which you know gave me a little bit pause for concern initially. But since it is at the lower end of the trading range, I think it is a pretty good time to buy it here. Let's take a quick look at the fundamentals and valuation. Here we see a couple of the stats here. Um, 100 million shares outstanding. Uh, Carl Icahn owns 70% of the company. Uh, price earnings of close to nine and a half. That's not low, it's about average. Uh, the other thing I look at here is price to book 5.69 times and uh, price to cash flow 5.12. That's a little bit higher than Exxon. Exxon is uh, high fours, but it's still within, it's not, certainly not overvalued. 
Okay, so why do I like this stock and why do I think this is a very good entry point, a very good time to get involved in this? Number one, I love investing alongside great investors like Carl Icahn. Um, I think that's always a good place to be. He's also an activist investor, so he's not going to just sit there passively. Um, you know, he, he has a lot of influence with the board and all of that good stuff. I think a lot of this stuff that we're talking about with the spinning off of the fertilizer business, it's classic icon. Second thing, the scarcity of these types of assets. There are no more refineries being built in this country. ESG has basically destroyed that along with government policy. Um, this uh, lunatic administration when it comes to oil and gas is going to stay in place and uh, that's not going to change. So uh, between the ESG and the government policies, uh, there are no more refineries uh, being uh, built in this country. So that is just going to make our refineries that much more valuable. Next, the fertilizer business, I believe, is an extremely valuable business because rising prices of natural gas and of uh, food prices and all of the inputs that go into producing food are constantly rising due to scarcity throughout the world and especially in Europe due to many geopolitical factors but the strongest one being the war in Ukraine and I've said on this channel many times I don't think the war in Ukraine is going away the US keeps funding it it's basically a proxy war with Russia uh, that is not going to change. This war is going to go on for a very long time. And these market dynamics are going to stay in place, meaning rising fertilizer prices, rising commodity prices, and rising gas prices, meaning natural gas, going into the input of fertilizer. And the fact that we don't need to use natural gas in our production because we're using petroleum coke to make the fertilizer gives us a competitive advantage in the market. So as you know, if you follow this channel or even if you're new to the channel, you know that I am very uh, bullish on the oil and gas business. This play is an offshoot of that. Um, you know, gasoline, jet fuel, and diesel are not going away anytime soon. They're gonna be here for as long as we're around and the demand is going to be strong. Even if we do go into a recession, I don't care. Uh, everybody has to eat with the fertilizer. Everybody has to drive a car, fly airplanes. None of that's gonna stop, and it's gonna put us in a very good commanding position in this company to make a lot of money. The other thing I like about this play is it's relatively small. It could be easily gobbled up uh, the, the refining business could be easily gobbled up by a larger oil and gas company. So I believe it's also an acquisition candidate. And they can grow their business uh, organically and make a very good return. Plus, I like the 5% dividend. I think that's awesome. It's higher than Exxon. And um, I think it's going to continue throughout the near and intermediate future. Thanks for watching. And if you got value out of this, please subscribe and like, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.